So you got to go to India for four months? Pretty much, yes. Um, and you, you did your initial cut there while they were shooting? Yeah, we cut whilst they were, um, whilst they were filming. And just before, actually, we had a sort of test um, shoot, two mm -hmm. weeks, where they, we were shooting bits of scenes and, and testing out these cameras, which a new camera, because part of the film shot digitally. Mm -hmm. So we were testing out these cameras and testing the workflow essentially. Right. Um, which camera, which digital camera did you we used? We used a camera that they kind of built up specially for the film, this wow. company in Germany, and they call it the SI2K camera. Sure. Essentially, I think it's a camera made by Silicon Image here. Right. And it, but they adapted it, and it, it needed to be very small. So they had this kind of, a like, a, like a stills camera, mm -hmm. like that, uh, with, a, with a, something you hold here, and a little thing there, and then it all feeds into a, a backpack or a bag oh. or something. And that, that was used to shoot a lot of the scenes in the slums. Mm -hmm. um, and also, in the end, used to shoot all of the millionaire show. Wow. Which they, they actually put it on, you know, sticks and, and yeah. stuff for that, but mixed with film. Do yeah. you know uh, the DP and Danny's level of of satisfaction with that camera? Um, I think um, very. Danny loved what the camp, what you could do with it, because he wanted initially. I think he was thinking of shooting on on DV cam or something mm. with little cam. You know, because he shot Twenty Eight Days Later like that. Right. But it wouldn't. It doesn't give you it, the resolution that this did. And, sure. and he he really loved it. He he loved the fact that it sort of gave things a life. You know and this little thing, it was a little bit like a, a home, you know, a little DV cam, but it was yeah. professional as well, so. Yeah. And Danny, and, and, and Anthony very happy as well. I mean, I think, yes, there were technical issues later. In low light, it doesn't work as well. And, and we had, you know, in grading, we, you know, we had to sort of match things up, but we had film material and this, yeah. you know. It presents a little bit of a challenge. Yeah, sometimes. and it, if the light, if the lighting is, if there's a lot of light, it's nice and sharp, but if there's less light, you know, it's, okay. it's, it's not as, as, as good. But we, we got over those problems, and the film looks beautiful. So. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. How did it impact your workflow in post? Well, it, it was quite tough, because this had never been used like this before, and so we had to sort of work out a system to get it into the Avid, and then also get it conformed and graded later. And so w we had to work with the, the grading house, Moving Picture Company is their name, and to sort of work out a system. And in the, in the end, it was relatively simple for, for us in the edit, but a lot more work because the material comes in on, on discs, yeah. little discs, and you just either copy it first or you, 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 you import it into the Avid. Mm -hmm. directly so it sort of transcodes it mm -hmm. when they shot it they kind of insert a grading reference they put a lookup uh, on it a lookup table right. a, a look on it they called it I think yeah and there were certain you know looks that we had and they'd set them but that didn't actually import the avid couldn't actually read that lookup right. table so we had to grade it in the Avid, and then also squeeze it because it was 16 by 9, which is, so we had to squeeze it and grade it. So we had three layers of, of um, video there before we'd even started. So wow. it was kind of, it, it made it for those sequences more complicated. And, oh, absolutely. And then we, mi yeah, we mixed that with film, so we had other sequences shot in film, and that came in more traditionally, you know. Yeah. I think it was three perf, a mixture of three perf and four perf, 35 mil. So we had a whole melting pot of things, but that, that in itself meant more work for us. Yes. Because when you're editing, you've got more video layers, and the, if the grading comes off, you have to reapply it. And, and also the grading, you, because you're, the, when you have a film, film rush is being graded in the telecine house, you sort of accept the grade that you've got. Sure. Whereas if you have control, more control over it, you're always thinking, well, Playing with it a little exactly, bit. yeah. And so myself and my assistants were constantly tweaking that and making it better and, and stuff. So, um, well, well, that brings up a good point. Did, did you have a, well, 
How big was your crew? Um, well, in India, um, <clears throat> we only had two systems out there because that's all we could bring out. So we had a, we were working day and night. So we had ab about four of us with an extra guy who looked after the camera, the material coming from the camera department, you know, and bringing it to us and saving it and, and sort of logging it and stuff. So we had four and then um, at times we had extra people because we had a, a lot of a lot of material and, it, and it's quite time consuming um, importing the oh absolutely because overnight and then we had to sync it up and and then when we came to England we had a core group of three of us so we had three systems running and then we had a fourth person from India who could speak Hindi and was learning like a trainee sure and then at, at a certain point we had four systems so oh. it was it turned much bigger than I was expecting. You know. 